Hi there, I'm Mike Robinson with Blackhawk Paramotor USA and today we have another tips and tricks for you. What we're going to cover is torquing the head and cylinder down on both the 125 and an Air Max. This type of torquing procedure also covers every other paramotor manufacturer's motor. So you can use it on any motor that you'd like. Let's cover a couple things. First of all, what is the purpose for torquing down your cylinder head and subsequently the cylinder? The purpose is, is to keep the gaskets compressed and keep that seal. You do not want any air getting into the cylinder cavity or uh, via the O-ring, which is between the cylinder and the cylinder head. Typically, I like to run a tank of fuel through my new paramotor. Once I've run that tank of fuel, then I retorque my head. If you notice any seepage between the head and the cylinder, or the cylinder and the case, that's not good. You should have already torqued it down. Often, if you see the seepage from the O-ring or from the gasket down below, you should probably go ahead, remove the cylinder and the head, and replace those gaskets. You can try to tighten them down, but if you still get air getting into the cavity of either the cylinder or through the top of the cylinder into the combustion chamber, you can get this kind of damage. The damage on this piston, and we'll show you some clearer pictures by the way, is caused by heat. This is not caused by a lean situation, but it's caused by heat via air getting into the cavity that should not be there. What we have here is scoring on the piston on the exhaust side, which is the hottest part of the motor, by the way. And we have some deterioration of the piston, again, on the exhaust side. The pin also shows signs of a lot of heat. It's kind of blued. That way you can tell there's been an excessive amount of heat. In this case, we also have the piston rings are seized. They're stuck. This motor lost compression, therefore its ability to make adequate thrust. Maintenancing Blackhawk equipment is really easy. It really is. So don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get frustrated. Don't get anxious. This video will help you as well as some of our other tips and tricks that we've done. It is truly easy to maintenance Blackhawk equipment. First thing we need is tools. Obviously we have our torque wrench, a 11 millimeter, a 13 millimeter socket, a part spark plug socket, a gapper, and I have some assorted uh, gaskets to show you. An O-ring, which is for the cylinder head, and the cylinder gasket to case gasket itself. You don't necessarily need these. A lot of this stuff is just kind of food for thought. We will use the torque wrench, and we will use the 11 millimeter wrench. That's really all you need. The procedure of torquing the cylinder head on a 125, which is the example I have here, is very, very simple. Everything that I do here applies to the Air Max over here. The only difference is, is in the Air Max, we take the cowling and we drill two holes that allow the socket to fit inside those holes so that you can torque that head down as well. So there's no reason to even remove the cowling on the Air Max. Very, very simple, basically a three minute operation. Okay, let's get started. I've taken some liberties of loosening some bolts to make the video a little bit shorter, but I think you'll uh, get through this with me. First of all, remove the spark plug. After you've removed the spark plug, always check for color. If you've had some leakage, this will be a good uh, learner tool for you. It might be white, it might be tan, certainly leaner than what you're used to operating at. I always check the spark plug. I like to see a dark brown or coffee brown, not wet, but certainly not a light tan or a white. I'd rather use a little bit more fuel or get a little bit more vibration than run my engine at top RPM in a lean situation which creates heat. The only thing that hurts a two-stroke these days is heat. Lean conditions cause heat. The next thing to do is remove the cooling cowling. 11 millimeter wrench, remove the nuts,
Remove the washers. Remember what goes on top because there are spacers underneath. There's a little neoprene gasket. Be careful not to tear it. Just turn it and twist it off. And then you're just going to jimmy the cowling until she slides off. We'll cover replacing this cowling carefully in a moment. I typically use the cowling as a little tray and put my nuts and bolts in it. Next, remove the washer and then the spacer. Remember the order that you're removing these in so you can reverse that order for reassembly. Next, we come to the really important part, the torque wrench. This torque wrench is made by Sears. They run about 79, 80 bucks. Very, very good. We use them in our shop. We've had no issues with them. They're a spring-loaded torque wrench, so to adjust it, you simply twist it. Remember one thing. When you're done using this baby, make sure you unscrew that spring all the way. If you don't, the spring will wear or stretch and not be accurate. That's not good. That's not the purpose of torquing your engine down. Aluminum does not like steel. You always want to go inch pounds, not foot pounds. And keep in mind how easily aluminum strips when a steel bolt is put inside of it. So let's be careful here. On the 125, we torque our cylinder heads, subsequently the cases, at 125 or 130 inch pounds. Anywhere in there is just fine. You want to go 125, you may do so. If you think that you're torqued it and it hasn't clicked, you might have to keep going and make sure that it does click. Don't over torque it. Don't say, well, that was pretty easy and maybe I should go a little bit more. Do not do that. Go by what the torque wrench says. Get a good quality torque wrench. This one right now is set at 130 inch pounds. The Air Max is 185 inch pounds. Inch. Okay? All right. Place your 14 millimeter socket on the torque wrench and set it. I've already done that. Place the torque wrench over the nut and pull it until it clicks. Can you hear that? You can see the lever move. It kind of breaks away and tells you that's good. Do not go past that. Obviously this is a new motor and she's already been torqued down to the correct specs. You may turn it maybe a quarter of a turn or maybe half a turn before it clicks. You know your torque is good. Okay, so we've torqued the head down. Everything went really well. We're going to inspect the fan. Look inside the fan cavity now that you have the, the outer cowling or the top cowling off and make sure that there are no damaged fan blades or anything rubbing or the shroud that covers the fan itself is cracked. Keeping your engine cool is the most important thing in keeping a two-stroke motor alive and flying and enjoying your engine for years to come. So while you have her apart, inspect everything that you possibly can. Remember, a clean engine is an engine that doesn't give you any problems. Inspect it, keep her clean, you'll notice anything that might be becoming a problem or you'll notice something that is a problem. It's better to notice it on the ground than it is in the air. One more point, don't fiddle with your engine. Don't play around with it. Don't fix something that's not broken. Last but not least is putting this baby back together. Place the spacers in the appropriate order. And now we place the cowling. Make sure that this cowling, the rear of the cowling, fits over 
the cowling that covers the fan. It's very, very important. It fits very nicely. I've double checked that it. it's over the fan cowling. Looks great. Next go the neoprene washers. Push them down all the way and you can kind of twist them. You kind of thread down on there in a way. Now I know that they're tight. The top washers and subsequently the lock nuts. If these lock nuts, the nylon in them has worn, feel free to replace them. Very inexpensive, not a big deal. Take your 11 millimeter wrench and lightly snug that nut. Do not over tighten that nut. You want to slightly, slightly compress the, the neoprene washers under there. You do not want to flex the shroud down. If there's any tension put against the shroud with a vibrating two stroke after a period of time, it might spider crack around the bolt or it might crack. Just barely get the threads of the studs through the lock nut and make sure it's not loose. The last thing to do is replace your spark plug. A lot of people continually put new plugs in and figure that a new plug is the fix for a prospective problem. Often it's not. I use the same spark plug now for almost 75 hours. I don't replace anything that's not broken. This is a new spark plug. It's a new engine. Regardless, check your gap on your spark plug. 25 thousandths is where it needs to be. BR9ES. And replace your spark plug. If you don't have a cylinder head temperature gauge at this point, give us a call and we'll get you one. They're very, very handy. They record your ongoing cylinder temperature as you're flying. Then when you land, it will also give you max cylinder temperature. If you stare at it while you're flying, it will also give you the max cylinder head temperature then as well. The 125 motors run very cool. You're looking in the 330, 350, 360 range with really hard climb out, maybe 400, 410. Uh, they run very, very cool. The Air Max does as well. The temperatures of the Air Max actually are almost identical to that of the 125. If you don't have a head cylinder temperature gauge, let us know. We'll be more than happy to ship you one. Here's a little secret that we do here. The tops of the spark plugs have a little cap on them, and this cap comes off very easily. If that cap comes off, Your spark plug cap will come off with it. Now you have an engine out. What we do is make sure it's tight with the pliers, and then we kind of score it. Make it a little bit rough, and your spark plug cap will fit tight. When I tighten my spark plug, I always hold it close to the head of the ratchet. I don't go out to the end. Remember the steel on aluminum deal. This is a big spark plug with steel threads and an aluminum threaded cylinder head. So don't over tighten it. You want to compress the washer and that's it. Replace the cap. Make sure that she's down very tight. The 125s and Aramex have really nice caps. I'm really happy with them as I've had problems with caps in the past. We've had no issues with these. They fit nice and tight. They're very difficult to pull off. That really was simple. 10 or 15 minutes, you've done one of your first services on your paramotor. You're kind of a mechanic now. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this tips and tricks video. If you have any suggestions for other tips and tricks videos, please let us know. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please give us a call at 209-786-7899. Get out there and fly.